Hello and what is up guys, Rai here and welcome back to some more automation and BeamNG Drive. Today we are going to be creating the fastest car in the world in the year 1967. So why 1967? That's a great question. So 1967 is when the Lamborghini Mira came out, which is arguably one of the most beautiful cars ever and also was the fastest car in the world in 1967. Um, top speed of about 171 miles an hour for, I think, which trim was it? It was the uh, P400S trim, which did 171 miles an hour, which is 276 miles an hour, or kilometers an hour, not, not miles. Uh, 0 to 60 was in 6.7 seconds. It got a whopping 11 miles per gallon US, which is just fantastic. Maybe we can beat that, maybe not. I uh, weighed around 2,900 pounds, from a th and it was powered by a 3.9 liter naturally aspirated uh, dual verd cam, a four valve. I'm not sure if it was a aluminum block or not. I can't find that out, um, but it was a V12 engine. So 200 or 365 horsepower and 286 pound feet of torque, a 10.7 to one compression ratio, which is pretty, oh, it's two valve per cylinder, not four, um, but 10.7 to one compression ratio. Uh, let's get started. So we're going this pretty much supercar, sports car body from the 70s. I also was contemplating uh, with this like Ferrari body, or I guess it's a Ferrari, or this is a, what was it called, a Lola, L-O-L-A, I think that's what it's called, like a race car, like a Ferrari 2, similar thing. We're doing the actual um, base game one, vanilla body, because I prefer to do vanilla. Uh, so we chose that body here, we're going to do a aluminum panel material, monocoque, just like the Lamborghini Mirror. This is going to be a mid-engine vehicle, seal, uh, mid-mounted transverse, again, just like the Lamborghini Mirror, a double wishbone front rear, again, just like the Lamborghini Mirror. We're not building a Lamborghini Mira clone. We are simply building a faster car in the year 1967. So it's gonna be faster in every way. It's going to be a, uh, a 90 degree V8. So we're doing a V8, not a V12. So we're actually uh, pretty much doing, this is going to be designed from my Italian company. Uh, I think it's called Venato, Veneto, um, V-E-N-E-T-O, Verona, named after the uh, region and province. Uh, region and province in Italy. So all aluminum engine, because this is a fancy engine, a four valve. It's gonna be a small engine too though, probably. Uh, we're gonna do a big stroke, a short, small bore, big stroke. We're gonna do probably a 3.5 liter, four liter sounds fine. So a slightly bigger engine than Lamborghini Mira, which is fine. We are trying to break the record, of course. Uh, it's gonna be a flat plane crank though. I haven't made too much flat plane crank vehicles except for a V10 video a while ago. And one thing I want to mention, guys, if I sound a little bit stuffed up or sniffly, I have a really bad head cold, and I'm just, I gotta get some videos up before I go, um, I'm going to, uh, on, like, a three-day trip, uh, this upcoming week, so, uh, expect some, like, vlog-type videos of me driving supercars, uh, I'm driving a McLaren 570S, that'll be pretty cool. So, lightweight forged, forged, obviously, the budget for this car is around 120000 so it's in $2012, which is around what the, uh, Lamborghini Mirror would have cost back then to me. We're gonna start off at 10 to 1 compression, a high cam profile. It's gonna make a lot of peak power pretty high up. No turbos, but uh, carburetor, we're gonna do a, we can do a six pack. I think the Lamborghini Mirror is a six pack, so it's three uh, two barrel carburetors, or we can do two four barrels. I think we'll do two four barrels. Uh, we're gonna do regular gas. I don't wanna do leaded, because I don't wanna do leaded gas. Uh, performance intake, um, long tubular. This is on a race car. This is a high performance car, though. We're gonna do um, one muffler only, a baffled, or what's better, baffled or reverse flow? A baffle is better for flow. There we go, guys. The engine's done. A whopping 29 horsepower. I'm just kidding. Uh, we are going to put this down to zero for now. We're going to get the fuel mixture up. I don't really care about fuel economy because this is a, it's a supercar. Uh, and I, I do not shy away from using some sliders. I don't want to use tons of sliders, but I think like plus three sliders is not, you know, not impossible. Uh, we can do maybe... We'll do plus five for that so I can get to 7,000 RPM reliably. And 7,000 RPM. 7,000 RPM is pretty good for a streetcar in 1967. We're making already 300 horsepower, so we are pretty close to the Lamborghini right off the hop. Exhaust diameter is pretty much good for now. We're going to increase the slider just a bit. Most of the money is going into the engine, guys, just so you guys know. Lower the ignition just. We'll do 10 for now. We can do this even higher. Nope. We're losing horsepower here. Wow, this is already going to be a challenge. Um, what do, what can we do here for more power? We can do, that's 297 to 228. This is 310 and 234, so a bit more. We can do this. I don't really care about efficiency all that much. We are losing some power because it's, it's not using all the fuel it's taking. That's fine. 320, 330. 330 horsepower is not terrible. Um, I, and we can still less horsepower and less torque than the actual Lamborghini. 
Just fine, now we're getting a bit more. 2.5 inch exhaust sounds pretty fair. I'm not sure the Lamborghinis was, but let's assume it's around there. Let's go 12.9 fuel air. And we're gonna go 30 for now. I think it was a bit higher. I can do it. Go do 95 for now. And just looking pretty, pretty close to a Lamborghini. Now, we don't necessarily have to have more horsepower to beat the car. Actually, well, like, we're, we're already, we can do a, probably a race tuber, maybe. I'd rather not do that. Um, but we might need the actual power here. We need to go exhaust just a bit more. Engine so far is pretty expensive, but that's, that's to be expected. We can go, we can go probably, we can go leaded. We can go super leaded, I guess. We can do that. I, I don't want to do race, because it's a little bit... You know, it's basically not. It's a race car. I don't want. It's not a race car. It's a street car. That's going to get pretty, uh, pretty good horsepower though. Okay, so we're already at 390. Um, so 390 horse, 295 four. That's not, even though we could probably get a bit more. We'll start with this. I might tweak it a bit more. So we got more horse, 390 horse, and 295 torque. So that's a very powerful car for 1967. Way too powerful for a four liter engine, if you ask me. Um. The Lamborghini Miura, yeah, has 365 horse and 286 pound-feet of torque. So we have just a bit lower compression than Lamborghini, which is fine. Uh, we're gonna do, I think, the first body here. So they're all pretty much the same. This is a target top, this is a coupe. And this is a coupe is like this. So we're gonna do this one nice and smooth here. We're gonna do the rest of the engine though. A manual five-speed, like the Lamborghini. Automatic lock and differential. And sports tires, the biggest possible. I think the Lamborghini actually had only had 205, so we're gonna get the advantage right there. 265 looks probably massive for the rear. But we're gonna do it. 16 inches sounds pretty fair. Discs. I like to go for the biggest tires at the beginning. Biggest rims or biggest brakes. Sorry, uh, I've, I took some medicine or some medicine for the cold, and I'm a little bit loopy, you know. Uh, Semi-clad. I still want okay fuel economy. I want to break the fuel economy. We want two seats, sports, no equipment. This is a so fast. No power steering, probably either. That's an option. You don't need it. 60 safety. I might lower that down, and then progressive S2, and we're gonna go sport tune. So right off the bat, we are just under 2,500 pounds. The car has some severe issues with wheel spin. Who would have guessed? Look at the 060, 4.1. We are very fast, 060. Top speed, uh, estimated. Oh, oh it doesn't go as an estimate. Okay, we are 319. We can hit, we can hit 319. We're looking for 276 kilometers an hour. Ooh, close. Oh, 275, oof. That is so close, guys. Uh, we can change the gearing just a bit here. I want less wheel spin. This is gonna be a drivable car at the end of the day. This is a street car. 4.7060 is still very impressive. I'm gonna increase the arrow just a bit and increase the drivetrain just a bit. So we are breaking. There we are, 277, 278 of rounding up here. Kilometers now is a theoretical 279, but 280 is a theoretical top speed. We can actually have a bit more now. Now we're losing it. Uh, this will bring us all the way to 280. If we could hit 280, I'd be more than happy. The brakes, the back brakes are actually struggling just a bit. We're gonna make them a bit smaller though. 10 inches sounds fine. And we should change the bias, so. They are very balanced brakes. 50-50 balance seems pretty much good for us. Uh, wow, this is not a good graph at all. Now, I'm not gonna go for the most arrow because we want to maintain that top speed still. I'm gonna go for a little bit, maybe a small spoiler at the back or something when we actually design the car. But besides that, I think the car is, the basics are done. So what I'm going to do now, like I always do, is have a two minute time lapse of me actually designing the car. And I'm also going to tweak things, maybe the engine a bit, maybe the suspension, maybe the, you know, the arrow and stuff. So after that, guys, I will uh, do a quick recap and then we're gonna see what this thing can do in Beam and G Drive. So uh, sit back, relax, and I hope you guys enjoy.
And so it is finally complete in front of us. The uh, either the Veneto, the Veneto, uh, the Veneto, Veneto, uh, Verona, the Veneto, Verona, Vincitore, Vincitore. I can't pronounce Italian, guys. I'm not Italian. Don't judge me. Um, so uh, Vincitore means victory, or I tried to translate with Google Translate to victory in Italian. It sounds pretty cool. So that's all that matters. Uh, 9.1 miles per gallon. I'm assuming this is. I think this is U.S. average. Which is, I think, the exact same. Let me check. It is 11. So we actually did worse than the real Lamborghini Mirror, but we are faster, theoretically, of course, top speed wise and stuff. Um, costing a whopping $86,000, 2012 dollars, which equates to about uh, 12,000, uh, 12,500 dollars, which is much cheaper than the $20,000 in 1967 Lamborghini Mirror. Uh, which is equivalent to 160-ish thousand dollars today. I'm assuming that's... I don't know when the Wikipedia article is. I'm assuming it's soon or recent. Um, so, uh, Vincitore 390 GT, 390 horsepower. GT sounds pretty like... It sounds like some sort of, some sort of uh, trim that an Italian company would give their car. So, starting at the front here, you can see... Um, I took a little bit of cues from... Uh, a little bit from Lamborghini front and rear... A little bit from Maserati front rear, a little bit from Ferrari front rear. So I took a little bit of cues from everything. I wanted actually to stick with my other Veneta Verona kind of style in other cars. Um, this badge is badge. It's crow, okay. So you'll notice here first thing, there is a pretty big mouth at the bottom here. There's a little bit of a glitch there, but just ignore that. Um, basically a nice big grill here with some little bumperettes, some little five mile per hour bumpers in the front here. That's mandatory, by the way. That's the, that's the law. Um... Then we have pop-up headlights right here. So these are your little, your actual running lights. They pop up, they go up and down. And we have a turn signal there. So when you're driving the car at night, you have to have your pop-up headlights. These are your running lights and the headlights. Just a little bit of glitches here and there. That's okay. Um, some bars, just add some deep detail and depth. We have the signature of Benito Verona hood. Vents and bulge, basically. It looks pretty good in this car, actually. I think it looks not bad at all. Um, we have a secondary grill under here, just blackout, just plastic or metal or whatever you just for paint, just to look kind of cool. Then you pretty much have a third grill just to give the car uh, some sort of design. There's nothing there just to give the car like you know some sort of shit going around here. Uh, no split or anything at the bottom because this is a night car from 1967 and they don't really have that back in the day. Uh, going to the side here, so we have the same sort of four horizontal stripes as the Venita Verona. Um, I, I think it's called the Danza, no, not the Danza story. I forget what it's called, the Venita Verona something. Um, my sports car, yellow sports car, you know, bright yellow sports car. The thumbnails look the same as that just for fun. Um, and we have the four stripes here, like just like that. And we have actually one of them is going to be the turn signal because you have to have a turn signal sign here. This is one of them. And if for those of you guys wondering, I don't make my cars hyper realistic. I, I don't like my cars following all DOT specs and whatnot. I just follow them to period ish correctness with my own taste in the cars. Um, the sides, we have one big old door handle right here. We have some mirrors sticking on the side. We have two mirrors mirror either side, which probably wouldn't have made it to production because you, you can go faster just with one mirror. You only need one mirror by law, so you, well, why two? It looks better. Uh, symmetrical. It really pisses me off if it's not symmetrical. But continuing off here, we have one big... I don't know if it works 100%, but I kind of like it. Like, like just looking like this, it looks like some weird body line. I think it's kind of cool. That's some character. Then actually, it's uh, a upright cooling duct, I'm assuming. Why not? The best back area is pretty plain. I couldn't get a whole lot to fit right there perfectly. It's okay if it's not perfect, guys. It's, it's I, I don't do perfect cars here. A uh, little bit of a hood kind of bulge here if you're wearing like a helmet on a racetrack or something. I'm not sure. It looks kind of cool. Uh, then some intakes on the side here, and I think they look pretty good intaking, of course, into the engine. Uh, most of the air intake is probably underneath the car or like flowing through here with some ductwork or something. I don't know because uh, there's not a whole lot here to actually feed air to the engine. The back, I'm actually pretty proud of the back. It looks pretty good. It's pretty complete. Uh, it's definitely one of my favorite well, it's not perfect actually it's not perfect don't judge me guys it's not perfect um so we have basically a giant you know red tail light on either side here and we have the parking or the reverse lights right in the middle here a gas cap right in the middle here which is a, a, a fairly common characteristic from the 1960s and 70s lots of gas caps dead in the back as the gas tanks right here usually uh, in this car it's probably actually like up more but you know whatever um, again, some chrome piping around everything around all the grills and stuff, just like in the front, lots of chrome piping everywhere, basically. Um, and then, then you have like, a secondary grill and then the third grill under here, just like the front. So except this one is real because it's got to feed some cooling to the engine. Uh, then a third one, just again, for some design, a license plate just on the rear because that's, that's the law. Maybe I'm not sure. It's, it's okay. It just looks good. It looks good like that. Uh, then we have a quad exhaust. Uh, is it like Lamborghini? Does, does Lamborghini have quad exhaust? I, I don't really know. Uh, we were having quad exhaust tips. Two on either side looks pretty cool. Of course, one is only functional on either side. That's okay. Um, besides that, the car is pretty much done. We have some 1960s, 70s period correct, I guess, wheels. 
Um, basically what these little three notches are, are when you are racing a car and you want to going really fast and you want to change your tires really quickly, um, you just put this pretty much a, like a spinner back on and you just hammer it away. Wait, is it supposed to be a lug nuts too? Isn't this supposed to be the lug nuts? I'm not too sure, but basically just hammer these things to turn it and tighten it down. Um, the car is done. I didn't tune anything really for the suspension. I tuned it very slightly. I retuned it to sport and just played with some stuff here. Uh, the right height seems pretty fine. We can actually lower probably just a little bit. Um, it wouldn't be this low probably in real life because no cars were super low in the 1960s. They weren't crazy low. Uh, if you look at like, you know, like, uh, any Ferraris or Lamborghinis, etc. There was a bit of a wheel gap. That's just how they were. I took some design cues from like the front-ish, just like the um, the two mile per hour bumpers and the headlights basically, and like just the big long grille and some of, some of it from the uh, Maserati Ghibli, the 1960s-ish Maserati Ghibli. I'll have the screenshot up on this picture, screenshot, picture up on the screen. Um, the top speed now. So I, I did actually incre increase the sliders for pretty much everything to get some price up because the price was not, wasn't hitting our target of 150,000 or whatnot. Uh, 0 064.6 seconds, so it is a quite a bit faster than probably almost any car back in the day. This is like AC Cobra. This is like Cobra 0 to 60 speed, which is a very fast car. Uh, 0 to 60 at least. It's not a top speed car like this is. Um, so anyways, guys, uh, let's jump into Beam and G Drive and see what we can accomplish uh, top speed wise. So the time has come. We are finally in Beam and G Drive. The first thing we're going to do is test out top speed of this car. We're going to do probably top speed and then maybe just like a quick handling circuit or something. Just to see uh, if this car can handle as well as hopefully it can uh, go fast. So let's start up the car here. Right now it's off, so it's completely quiet. It's off. Sounds, of course, fantastic. It might be a little loud, for me at least. It's very loud. It's a, a 4 liter. I think it's a 4 liter uh, dual avert cam 4 valve, all aluminum V8. So let's just drive it in first gear. But we're launching apparently, okay. 70 kilometers now in first gear is pretty high, but I like that. So far, a 140, no problems. Looks pretty good beam, actually. No problems at all. Still pulling hard over 200 kilometers an hour. It's not going to handle that well. I'll tell you guys right now. It's not gonna, it doesn't feel like it's going to handle well. Uh, 230 kilometers an hour. Still going strong. 240. 250. We're going to break 270 to have the record, basically. 270, I think, is the record. 171 miles an hour. I think it's 276. Come on. We get a 280, 280. Wow. Wow. Oh god. That was full emergency stop. So you guys saw it right here. 284 kilometers an hour. It could have kept going. I probably could have hit... Like, it, it was pulling pretty hard. Maybe I could have hit 300 kilometers an hour. That would have been a complete feat in itself. But we uh, did it. We beat the record for the fastest car in the world in 1967. Um, it's not like what Kill Rob can do, obviously. Kill Rob, the lead dev of automation, does his own series sometimes, where um, he basically tries to beat the fastest car in the world 10 years earlier with, with technology from a decade earlier. So if there's a record in 1967, he will use 1957 tech to beat it, which is pretty cool. Um, so now let's basically jump into uh, a track and see if this thing can handle it as well as it, uh, it can go fast. Uh, this is the old racetrack map in the automation sort of world level world uh, in BMG. So we're basically going to do this and see if uh, this thing can do pretty good. Um, it's not going to set a record just because it's, it's not the fastest car, but... Of course, we've just had a really failed launch. Wow, the acceleration is... Oh, the braking is brutal. It feels like it handles pretty well immediately. A little bit oversteery, which is what it's saying on the graph. Ooh, gentle, gentle. I'm not going for a record time, I'm just driving around basically, but we're gonna try to do it a little competitively. Definitely at low speeds, it's very oversteery. Oh, it just wants to kick out. We're gonna brake here real hard. Ooh, wow. Likes to spin in second gear there nicely. Ooh. Ooh, that was close. Honestly, we already been sitting that bad of a time. Uh, we're gonna be, uh, I'm guessing, about a 1 minute 10 on the first lap. It was a very bad first lap, though, so we can probably get it down to almost a minute, even. Probably a minute 5. The brakes are... Oh. Oh, gosh. We only we'll gotta do one lap of this. We'll do another lap probably after. Yeah, 
This is the very first map, or very first lap on this on this track of my car at all, so don't uh, don't uh, criticize me too harshly. At 126, which is not bad in the grand scheme of things, uh, for only one laps, my record's 118. I don't usually do too much one laps. So we're just gonna try that again, one more time. As long as I don't rip up the gears, as long as I don't try to launch it from like you know high revs, it goes pretty fine. That flat plane crank fade set sounds fantastic, though. I'm not gonna lie. I would love to have a, a Mustang GT350 just for that flat crank. That flat crank, the flat plane crank. V8 sound, ugh, 8,250 RPMs for that, but this is just 7,000, and it still sounds fantastic. If we can break 1 minute 25, I'll be happy, to be honest, because that was a bad first lap, and this thing is a. This thing is definitely hard, under, hard, hard to control. Ooh, this thing is so hard to control, though. It needs... If, if they had full arrow, if, if, if it was a race bug on this thing, like a Schlacht even, this thing would do quite well. We're not going to get a record time, probably. I mean, as long as we don't wipe out, we will, actually, I think. We're at 1 minute 3. The last checkpoint there. We're going to break here. We're going to turn. We're going to break. Oh. And we're not going to beat our time. That's okay. It's a little oversteery. I haven't gone up the high speed driving yet, but... Wow, the acceleration is just so violent. It accelerates so quickly. Oof. That crashed there. So 1 minute 32. Uh, we're just gonna go to free roam. And turn it off. So this thing is complete. The Veneto Verona... The Veneto... The Veneto or the Veneto? The Veneto Verona... Uh... The, the, the victory, whatever it's called, the victory thing in Italian, the victory, I don't know, uh, is done. The car is, look awesome in meme actually, in the red, it looks very awesome. Um, design wise, I'm going to give the front for myself probably an 8 and the rear probably an 8. So definitely one of my most balanced designs, I'd say the side, I, I don't grade this the side, but if I were to grade this, I'd give it a, a 6 because I don't do well in the, the sides, you guys know that. Um, uh, I just want to say thank you for all the uh, support from everyone. I literally have... 40 or probably 40 comments I have to reply to tonight still uh, and hopefully they'll get to that um, of course this is not uh, the same day that I'm posting this video but I've, I've, there's a ton of comments to get through and I read each and every one of your guys' comments um, so if you comment I will read it if you guys have an idea for a car I will put it on the list to do I can't promise when it'll get done because the list is growing much faster than I put out videos clearly um and i like to do things like this things that i that people haven't mentioned that i just like to do too so if there's something that i think is gonna be fun i do it first but i also do enjoy um, your guys's ideas as well uh thank you so much for watching guys and as always i'll see you next time